the people who tried to kidnap this governor, they're just not getting charged with anything. And I was like, what? What in the world is going on? Like, like, and what you just said, like, really, really speaks to that. And it, it's, it's. Well, you know, I'll give you a personal experience. and I don't mind talking about it. Um, I came forward and um, a year ago now, um, I got a message from a Twitter attorney. Um, Erston Young is one of the Twitter attorneys who said, we're informing you, we went to court to try to even be able to tell you this, but your, all of your social media and um, your Twitter account has been under sealed um, subpoenas by, you know, the US government, by the NSA. So anyway, by the FBI. And um, they even filed a case and there was a whole case, but everything was under sealed. So when my attorney called to say, okay, you took her information under sealed warrants, sealed search warrants, but she didn't know it. And now we're being told by Twitter this happened. So this might've happened with Google, with you know everything, all, all my, and, um, and they wouldn't give her any information and said, it's a sealed warrant. And to this day, I don't know, there's a case in Northern California and they were examining my, all my information for whatever reason, it's still going on. Coincidentally, this happened right after Joe Biden became president. So I don't know, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's where we're at. We are like we're, and, and, it, and it's, it's, I'm just a regular citizen. I'm not anyone that important or special. So it was really stunning for me to, to know that I was under that level of scrutiny, that there was actually a case with a grand jury and paneled where I was involved somehow, but didn't know it and wasn't being told. And my attorney couldn't get any information about it. And I was threatened with being um, charged with espionage and everything else. And I just said, basically through my attorney, I said, I will not be silent about Joe Biden. So you can intimidate me. You can try to jail me, you can do whatever, but it won't change what's going to happen. And so nothing's happened. I haven't been arrested and nothing's happened. And I'm not a dissident. And, I mean, I am a dissident, I guess, in their eyes, but I'm not, um, you know, foreign agent or anything like that. You know, Caleb's I grew up on a farm in Wisconsin, so. Anyway, Caleb's been through stuff too, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which is which is <laughs> why I'm, I'm really excited to have you both, both on at the same time, because um, I, I mean, Caleb, both of you are journalists. I, I, I highly recommend Tara's mo um, her most recent article about um, the Italian model that you wrote about and the uh, what she experienced with a, an, an American soldier. Um, and I yeah, yeah, I, that was it was it was brilliant. Um, so thank you for covering that um, because well, there's, there's, there's a whole. I'm not a journalist. I'm I'm a writer. Um, I don't consider myself a journalist. I'm a, I have a law degree, and, and I've you know I've studied political science. But Caleb, I would defer to Caleb. He's he's truly a, a really good journalist. And uh, thank so thank you. you. Well, thank you very much. Well, I love the work that you do, Tara, as well, and uh, I've learned a lot from it. And and I'm really glad that you are continuing to to be relentless and speak up and and not not just kind of go away, which is what, you know, the mainstream media would like. I mean, the fact that, you know, the fact that Me Too was started uh, against Trump and then stopped when Biden was selected, um, you know, <laughs> yeah. and one thing that I, I would be curious to ask you about, you know, is um, in my book on Kamala Harris, I talked about how when, when Kamala Harris, uh, you know, was, was running against Joe Biden in the Democratic primary, she said that she believed the accusers of Joe Biden. <laughs> And she never has retracted that. And uh, now uh, you'll notice that in her acceptance speech at the Democratic National Convention, she said, I, I know a predator when I see one. And then you would think if you listen to the speech, that was a line about Trump, except it was followed by this awkward pause, this very <laughs> awkward pause in which everyone, I mean, there weren't very many people in the room because of COVID or whatever. You know, this awkward pause. Do you think that Kamala Harris has something on Biden? I, I think there's a good chance she does have something on Biden. And that, I reached that out to her. I reached out to her before I went public. Mm -hmm. uh, she was my representative. So I reached out to her as a former Senate aide. You know, I had worked um, for Leon Panetta when he was a congressman, and I worked for Joe Biden, and I worked for Jack O'Connell, who was a state senator. So I'd worked in both the state and federal government and um, as a staffer. And I reached out and I said, I, I need help. I want to come forward about this. I want someone to know that this person shouldn't be elected president. You know, I had gone through being silent during his VP years, and um, she never responded never said a word. And she, to this day, she hasn't responded, but she didn't 
you're right, Caleb, though, she did not discredit me. Like, for instance, um, there were several politicians like Nancy Pelosi, Dianne Feinstein, that basically came out and said, affirmatively, they didn't believe me without talking to me, used my name and said, I don't believe Charlie. Yeah. And didn't, you know, didn't know me, didn't. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's very interesting because, you know, she was put on, you know, the speaker's schedule for the Democratic Convention came out and she was listed not as the nominee. She unfollowed Joe Biden on Twitter like six hours before he named her as the nominee. Like something was going on there. That's not normal, right? And Biden was 11 days behind the day he'd announced he was going to announce his vice presidential nominee. And it was almost like they were scraping the barrel to find any way out of, of picking Kamala Harris. They, they elevated, you know, Karen Bess is very obscure. No one had ever heard of Karen Bess, but out of the blue, all of a sudden, well, maybe we can do Karen Bess. You know, you know, I said it would be a woman of color. She's a woman of color. We can do <laughs> and then and then out of the blue, somehow we all found out that because Karen Bess had been to Cuba like 40 years ago, she went to Cuba. But somehow that just magically got into the press. I mean, who might keep track of who goes to Cuba? I mean, we don't know, right. of course, but somehow. Yeah. Oh, oh, no, she's a communist. Can't be Karen Bess. <laughs> you know, yeah, you know, and 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 then all of a sudden Kamala is, is the nominee and and Kamala is the nominee, despite unfollowing Joe Biden, despite not being on the schedule as the nominee. It looked to me like Biden was trying to not pick her as the nominee for some reason. And, and then, you know, if, if you put that in the context of her never retracting her statement, she believed, you know, she believed Biden's accusers. And then if you put that in the context of this, I know a predator when I see one line in her speech, followed by this awkward pause, something's going on there. And that makes me wonder what's going to happen. I mean, will Joe Biden complete his term or will he step down and hand power over to Kamala Harris? I mean, uh, you know, because there's no way she'll win an election. That's clear. She's less popular than Joe Biden is. And Joe Biden's not popular, you know, well, so... Yeah. And, and are, do you feel like, I mean, this, I, I know my opinion, so I, I, I want to hear your opinion. Do you feel like they're purposely making her look bad or, or, you know, kind of diminishing her in this administration? Well, it's been revealed that Biden's, you know, Biden's staff hates her staff and that they're, that's part of the reason people are quitting is they don't want to be known as Harris people because Harris people are hated by everyone else. Um, so there's something going on there. Right. Uh, the other thing, though, is that uh, I think it's pretty clear that that Kamala Harris is in with the people that ran the Hillary Clinton State Department. You know, there was that yeah. meeting. That's there was right. that meeting in Long Island, New York, uh, where the, uh, you know, the donors to Hillary Clinton, you know, Hillary Clinton was talking about going, you know, running again. They decided, no, Hillary Clinton won't run again. And they all put their money behind Kamala Harris. And uh, and that, you know, that's who she represents. And that that, you know, that that Obama, you know, he had Hillary Clinton as his you know secretary of state. And then the Arab Spring happened, you know, I mean, first there was the Honduran coup, then the Arab Spring, so much fallout. And then it was almost like after, you know, after she was replaced with John Kerry, Obama almost spent the second half of his term trying to like pick up the pieces from what the Hillary Clinton State Department had done. Um, you know, I mean, that was basically, I mean, it was negotiating the Iran deal. While he was droning, while he was droning. Other sure. People. And, and that, you know, that there was a difference there and that, you know, there have been other revelations that have come out. You know, the New Yorker revealed that that Obama basically wanted to fire uh, Jared Andrew Cohen, uh, you know, because he was he was using Twitter to maneuver in Iran's politics without asking the president, um, you know, and then Hillary Clinton protected Jared Andrew Cohen. And there is some kind of Silicon Valley faction. Uh, that is that the Arab Spring was like their dream come true. They've been working on it for years. And Obama may not have been, even been in on the conversations about it. Right. And they they, you know, used the Hillary Clinton State Department to foment all kinds of chaos around the world. And that's who Kamala Harris is in with. And I think that that within the Democratic Party, within the Republican Party, there are a lot of people that are very terrified of having that faction back in power because so much damage. I mean, the world is still reeling 10 years later from what went happened in 2011. I mean, the refugee well, she's crisis. she's talking about ISIS. running again. She's yeah. talking about Hillary's, she's putting, as you know, they're putting it out there hard to have her run again. And it, I, I just don't understand. Like, the, it won't, it won't, it's almost like they're, they're setting up to, to lose because no one will vote for her. That's not, it's not going to happen. Yeah. Um, it, and they were, yeah, they were floating the, um, what was the other ticket? Biden and Cheney? Oh, yeah, I yeah. saw that. Like that yeah. was that was dream so. team foreign policy, right? 
<laughs> oh my gosh. Remember when they were all like, oh, if you support Tulsi, she's a Republican. And they were like, now they're like, fine, and Cheney. It's like, what the what the hell are you talking about? You know, Glenn Greenwald has been talking a lot about, you know, and, and he makes a good point, a lot about how the media now, especially in the last few years, is, is all former, if you look at MSNBC, if you look at CNN, they're all former, you know, NSA people and, and CIA, you know, ex-CIA. And, and it was, it's all these intelligence. And then MSNBC is kind of filled with those plants and they send them off to foreign countries and they try to do their thing. And it's like, oh, you know, and, and, and so the, I don't know if, if citizens are paying enough attention to, to how the media is being weaponized against our own citizens and against, you know, really the whole world. Well, and the idea is to break us down into atomized individuals. I mean, the target, you know, during the Cold War, the target was supposedly communism. But at this point, the target is any collectivism, anything that binds people together, whether it be their, their nationality, uh, their religion, their identity as a social class, the labor movement. They want everyone to be an atomized individual, not identifying as part of a group, not identifying as part of a family, just you against the world, right? You, your own social media, your own Twitter, you're the atomized individual so that, that you can be very easily rolled over. Any of these illiberal institutions, that bring people together, that get people working for a collective interest, uh, that get people seeing a common interest, they are a threat to liberalism. And uh, that's really what Silicon Valley is all about. It's about liberalism. It's this, this belief in individualism above all else. And, uh, and then of course that enables, uh, you know, if you're just an atomized individual, those with the wealth and power can, can rule uh, with, without any, um, without any limits. I mean, on the walls of the Justice Department, I remember seeing this in DC and it made me think, on the walls of the Justice Department, you never hear this quoted, there's a, there's a, a, a phrase that says, where law stops, tyranny begins. And I saw that phrase and I thought for a minute, and I thought that's actually true, right? Without law, it becomes de facto the law of the jungle. Right. And uh, the strong just rule over the weak without any any check or balance on their power. And in, in our society, you know, your strength is how much money you have. So if you get, right. you know, you, I mean, I mean, that's and that's what we're kind of facing.